What is up, friends? Welcome back to another episode, a very jam-packed episode, for that matter, of Bill Pepperteen Podcast. I'm Don. I'm Corey. I'm Shane. And I'm Davis. Oh, we lost it there. <laughs> we really well. it fell off I've never had it there. But like I said, this is a jam-packed episode because we're covering two games this week in what? Ghost Recon Breakpoint and Untitled Goose Game, which I keep referring to as Ghost Goat Game. Okay. But doesn't matter. And like I like to say every week, don't forget to like, subscribe, do all those things to these videos so that we gain more exposure. So comment on it, say hi, say whatever, and I'll respond to all the comments from now on if you guys comment. <laughs> I will respond to them. Ever. Every comment I will respond to until it just becomes a burden. Well, right now, it will not be a burden. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yes, do those things. At least, at least subscribe. If, if all of our our we we our views are about sixty percent unsubscribe people. So you people who aren't subscribed, that sixty percent of those viewers, sub this stuff. What do you mean, you people? There's people out there How who are not subscribed to us, <laughs> and those are the people that need to sub. All right. Um, what have you guys been doing this past week? Anything interesting? Games. Probably not, because your uh, lives are boring. Work. Right. Like working and playing some Destiny. I've been working and playing some goat game. I mean, goose game. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing. The expansion pack is actually you play as a dick goat, because goats are also dicks. A dick goat? It's true. A dick goat. I love dick goats. <laughs> I'm sure you do. But, you know, take, it's, don't take that out of context. I don't know that you can take that in context. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I don't know. I feel like it's been it's been slow for games right now. Yep. I just right, before the, right before like the holiday season kind of stuff. I mean, Call of Duty comes out this month. Call of Duty comes out this month. Luigi's Mansion comes out. The stuff comes out at the end of the month, but we just haven't gotten there yet. It's like Borderlands was it, and then Ghost Recon was kind of it. Was kind of one of those also big launches. When does uh, um, when does uh, Outer Worlds come? It comes out this month, twenty fifth, I think. Twenty fifth, yes. Yep. Mm-hmm. Is, so that, is, that the, is that the same day as? Call of Duty? Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh-oh. Rut row. I, would, Gee, I, I wonder feel like which one I'll get. I will getting... be getting Call of Duty. Because I'm Kyle. Both of them. Probably. Because it's expendable income. Yeah. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. I don't have that. Because Don and I are adults. Don, you're High five. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, you know, video game worlds, not much is happening. Except... Something huge is happening in the video game world. Do you guys know what that is? The fact that Digimon Cyber Sleuth is coming to the Switch this week. I said something huge, not something stupid. (laughs) (laughs) Fortnite, right into our news. Fortnite. uh, Crazy. Uh, Once again, Fortnite does not cease to amaze me and is the coolest thing on the internet and is garnering the views of over 6 million people. (laughs) Not kidding, that is a real number. It's over 6 million people watch this event in Fortnite. The end of Season 10... um, and as Fortnite does, they have these cool world events. There was a timer that counted down, uh, and Rocket launched, and it went on all these like different wormholes and shit, and essentially blew up the world and sucked it into a black hole in the short version of it. And since uh, Sunday around like two or one Central Time ish, um, it had, the launcher, everything in the game has just been a black hole. So, and. Rumor is it's going to last until about Tuesday, so it will be a black hole for about two days, and the world went nuts. Everybody was interested in seeing it. Kids are punching the shit out of their TVs because they're like, why isn't it working? I need my Fortnite ADD. <laughs> I need my, my floss dance right now. Mm-hmm. So, but, uh... So it was not it was not intentional, right? Is that what we're getting at? No, it was intentional. No, it oh, totally it was. was. Okay. Yeah, this is, this is, this is, they did this on purpose. So Fortnite like, decided to not get revenue for two days. It does. It's it, such a drop it, in the bucket. They got they got more exposure, and exposure is where the real money comes. Than their two days worth of revenue. Like I have a feeling this will bring back a lot of players once it comes back up, just to see what changed. They will, because uh, the rumor has it it's going to be. Well, actually, there was a leak, and that's also in the news. There's a, a they're calling the next from if this leak is true, and the video like it's a trailer, and it looks real, and I imagine it's real. Um, so it's Fortnite Chapter 2 is what it's called, uh, and it shows off a new map. This map has got boats, it's got fishing, and you can level up your season pass by fishing and doing this stuff. New ways to level up everything, um, new battle pass, new stuff. Uh, new stuff. It's about a 32-minute, or not 32-minute, 
32 second trailer uh, and it just shows off the the new season which is rumored to be starting or I don't know if the se- I guess the season would be starting when the game relaunches but the second so you know Fortnite uh, gained that huge b- bit of exposure everybody's interested in Fortnite again even though it was kind of waning and I thought that it might be the downfall not necessarily the downfall but like the s- slow decline of Fortnite there might be people like me in, in the, the six million because I was heavily involved. In it. Like I logged on to Fortnite, I was I, I watched the black hole. I was like, "This is cool." I didn't have any intention of really playing the game, but I just wanted to like see this because it's cool. Um, I don't know how many people are like that. Maybe like the Twitch. View- There's some Twitch viewers that are like that, but I like people who logged on to do this are probably people who be playing the game. I doubt there are many people like me who are just wanting to like experience it because I'm a nerd. I would like to point something out. I believe. Uh, Fortnite Save the World is also down. It might be. People think it's going to go free-to-play. You said it's probably going to go free-to-play. That's what people think. Um, but the trailer that I saw didn't say anything, didn't have anything to do with uh, Save the World. It was just Battle Royale. So, until tomorrow, so I don't remember what Epic gave a specific time, but uh, by the time this video is up, Fortnite will probably be back, and Season 11 will probably be active, or Chapter 2. I, I don't know if they're calling it Season 11, but Chapter 2 will probably be started by the time this video is up. So we will know for sure, and our speculation will not be will be either confirmed or denied at this point. But, I mean, that, that, that I'll send the trailer to you guys later. I didn't send it to you guys, but you guys can watch it. It's like, it looks legit. It's probably legit. I don't know where someone got it from, but uh, there is a trailer out for, for Chapter 2. But that is probably the biggest news of the month. I don't know. It's huge. Yeah, no, I, I, this is, I, I don't think anyone would have guessed that they would have shut Fortnite down for more than an hour, if at all. I saw some dudes, some, like, I, I assume a child, probably not a child, he was, he was probably like 17, and he was, some, he was like, Fortnite's so dumb for doing this, you're gonna lose two days worth of revenue, and they make so much money off of Fortnite, and then this intellectual, who's not an idiot, responded, it's like, do you not understand that Epic owns the Unreal Games engine and ma- that makes 20 times the amount that Fortnite will ever make? And the dude's like, Fortnite makes bi- like a billion dollars last year. And he was like, you're an idiot. The Unreal <laughs> engine is an, a bajillion games and you get pay licensings for that. And then he just didn't respond for the rest of it. It's like, no way, you idiot. So I don't know. I hate most people who are probably playing Fortnite. And I don't even like Fortnite that much. So it's cool. I wish I liked it more. Do you guys think Ninja was just like rocking on his like Sitting down and rocking with his knees up against his chest, like, what do I do? I don't I know bet what he to knew. do. Epic is probably cool with Ninja, and they'd like to tell him shit. Because I'm pretty sure Twitch knew, because uh, Twitch had a a Fortnite channel that was streaming the black hole, and it was also um, like promoting people who are also streaming Fortnite. So it was like the black hole like from twitch and then the other side was like fortnite streamers who are talking about this and like doing this and they would just like cycle through these different promoted streamers and the at the top it was like fortnite has been down for and then a timer so it's like you kind of like no one knew this was going to happen but you had a timer ready and all this stuff ready mm. so it's like i think twitch knew because for uh, like epic games are probably like all right you're probably going to get a lot of traffic make sure twitch doesn't break and it only broke it a did. little bit it, it did but only a little and same thing with the Epic Launcher, which is a bigger deal <laughs> that everyone who wasn't interested in Fortnite had to face the consequences of. It was probably only for like an hour uh, after it happened that the launcher just didn't work. Like I tried to log in to like do it at first and it's just, it like logged me out and I tried to log in and it just wouldn't let me log in. So you could play your games offline, but if it required online, you couldn't play any of the games. But we'll see where this takes us. Uh, moving on to something... Interesting, but definitely far less interesting. Uh, <laughs> developer Starbreeze says we're getting a Payday 3 by the year 2023. Wow. Now, payday 2, it is a long way away. And Payday 2 was like one of those games that was supported well after I feel like it should have been supported. I feel like it just now got, or like just recently stopped being supported. Yeah. The last yeah. DLC came out like within the last six months. And that game came out in like 2013 or 14. It's an old game. It was fun. Ago. We played it for a good amount of time. We played it on the 360 for the record. So, I mean, yes. that, that in and of itself is a statement. Yeah. Uh, well, if we played it on the 360 and the Xbox One launched in 2013. Just uh, just for reference, Payday, right, so the we- first one came out in 2011. The second one came out in 2013. Yeah. Did we play it on the 360 then? I didn't yes. have... We played yeah. it when I was at IO and I didn't have an Xbox One there. No, I feel so like... Yeah, we played it on 360. 
When did it come out in well, 2013, Shane? August. Did, I definitely got an Xbox One immediately. So maybe I had an Xbox did, One when we did, were doing this, though. Oh, well, maybe. Did Payday One. No, that that didn't come out in 2011, really. Yeah, yeah, I believe it. That was high school. I thought I thought it was much earlier than that. Like on, I wasn't it a PlayStation first? I have no I idea. I thought it was on PC first. But I think it was on PC first. Oh, okay. whatever. But, I thought uh, that I didn't like that game a whole lot. I had it. Pay, payday. Payday one. Oh, okay. Payday two. Payday two's good. Uh, yeah. Pay, uh, it, Payday the first one was on Windows and PlayStation three. Uh, Starry Studios expects to release it by that date. Hopefully, uh, it might come sooner. So, like twenty twenty two to twenty twenty three. So. I would imagine that they are only just now starting on that game. Probably. If, I don't know how big the studio is, but uh, yeah, it seems that they're probably going to... I mean, they, fun, pro- they had to have made a lot of money on it. It's it, Oh, sh- I'm, yeah. For sure. I mean, it had multiple releases. It was They wouldn't have supported it for so long if it wasn't profitable. No, yeah, it just, but there was like an overarching story, too. Between like all the different DLCs and all the different characters, which is also cool. Yes, Shane. Uh, as of November first, twenty fourteen, which was a long time ago, uh, Payday Two had sold nine million. That's pretty good. That's that, pretty good. and that for, was uh, for a much five years game, ago. It's pretty good. Was that across all platforms? Yes. Okay. All right. Well, good. Good for it. Uh, cool. Borderlands Three. It's got its next week of events. Like we've mentioned every week, we will cover it every single week because we love Borderlands. And this week, show me the Iridium. Iridium drops will be uh, will be being boosted so you can get uh, you know, anointed weapons and stuff and Crazy Earl stuff and vending machine stuff. I still have yet to buy anything from Crazy Earl. I th- I always forget that he's down there. Yeah, I don't remember. He, did, uh, he doesn't I have anything like the horse head. Great. That's true, he did buy the horse head. I think I might want skin. Maybe when like we're level fifty or whatever, uh, we're not we're not constantly just getting better loot. After after this event, it was during this event. It's all standard enemies will drop iridium. So I October, feel like we'll have a surplus. October fifteenth to October twenty second, uh, will be the event. I guess there's also a micro patch we have to download, but I'm pretty sure my game downloads a micro patch. Right? Yeah, no, it's a hot fix. I wouldn't call it a patch. It's something server-side, something we don't actually have to download. You're a patch. You'll need to download a micro patch to access to get access to it. But you to don't you. have to you don't have to quit the game to do it, you just have to go to the main menu. Okay. Uh, <laughs> second nerd. Um <laughs> What? Oh yeah. Borderlands more borderline stuff, that's it. It's, it seems like a kind of a lame one comparatively to the other ones, but I I mean I don't need iridium. Yeah, I haven't oh. used any of it yet, so... I like the chance of getting more... I mean, I, I do random. have almost, or like, over 800. I yeah. need, to start, <laughs> need to start spending it. What is the anointed weaponry for? What does that do? What does that mean? Uh, it is weapons that give uh, have, like, a special effect on them. Like, after you use your action skill, deal 200% more melee damage for a short period of time. So just, like, a normal ability? except just Yeah, except it's more geared towards... Uh, Select certain builds for a class. Okay. Right. <coughs> we were we were playing last night, and I got this super cool grenade mod that you, when you threw you it, you call it, it cool. I call it an assault on the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> My so, game crashed when you threw it. It's true. <laughs> it, did. Throw it, it bounces five times, and each time it and it's it's like it got like a little fountain on it that's spinning and shooting bullets in all directions. So it's bouncing and doing this, and every time it bounces, it bounces five times, and every bounce it leaves one of those things and after five seconds or whatever after it hits the spot it spawns another one that bounces and, and starts shooting those things too so it's just chaos and green lasers flying over all over the place it was wacky guys i don't know why i didn't lead off the show with this but there's huge news got, yeah. we gotta start over did you hear this i Corey? don't know what is and moves canceled there's gonna be no. a new fuck you davis silent hill game is it called pt it's, it's called, called trailer? <laughs> a pachinko machine because it's only a slot machine. Hey, no surprise. So, uh, what? 
God damn it. Silent, Silent Hill they, slot machine? They, that's what they did with Metal Gear. Konami is making Silent Hill slot machines. Uh, pachinko machines. No, they're they actually these are slot machines. I said oh, pachinko okay. because that's what they normally are, but no, yeah. it's actually slot machines. Oh. Um, it's straight up slot machines. You're going to see them in casinos and stuff. So that instead of getting a real Silent Hill game, Konami's going to use the property to make slot machines. Hold the press. Because that's where they make the real money. Is it Unfortunately. Really? Oh, yeah. Are you, are you serious? They're it's like slot a slot machine. A, a casino is like a license. For, you don't make any money off of slot machines. Like, as, as a user, you make no money. I've never won. Like, I've won some money off a slot machine, but it's never been enough to put me above, like, my starting amount. It always just, like, it slowly it depletes my money slower because it gives me back some of the money and before I run out. They're awful. Play roulette or other fun games. But, uh,. You get you have really bad odds for roulette, craps, but I really like craps. roulette. Craps, you have good odds. Or Baccarat, you have, I think, the best odds in casino. Doesn't matter. We're not trying to tell you to go gamble your money away. Except I am. Gamble your money away. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Belt so... Belt Pepper team announcement. Everybody go gamble. <laughs> Microtransactions, but IRL. Even if you're, you, you, even if you're under public 21. Public service announcement. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so, new Silent Hill game. Unfortunately, it's for casinos, which... I don't know if that's good or bad for the it's hope bad. for the future of the game. It's bad. It's bad. It's bad. It's bad now, but just not bad. If they're using no, it, period. I feel like nobody's gonna go. Ooh, I remember playing that game as a slot machine. Nobody's no. gonna do that. No. But it looks you pretty. Play slot machines. I feel like Most they. Old. I feel like uh, Konami might just be doing that to spite Kojima. Yeah, uh, it's very possible. I, th- I think Konami's like, doing that so that they don't we're, lose we're, the trademark. Oh, yeah, that too. You have to do certain... Th- you have to use a trademark or else you lose the trademark. So they're probably like, well, we have Silent Hill. We make slot machines. Didn't Let's put it together. Didn't they, didn't they go... Didn't they see how well Resident Evil remakes were doing? Do you what just want a remake? Because I mean, that's, they're, I that would be I fun. What Resident Evil people want... <laughs> I mean, even Resident Evil 2 was basically a brand new game. Or the remake of Resident Evil 2 was basically a brand that's new true. game. That's true. Yeah, it really is. I liked less than the original Resident Evil 2, but that's just because really? I like older games more. Yeah, I like I, I like the steady cam of RE2 more than okay. I like this. And I, I tank controls. Yeah, I fucking hate being hunted down by people while, while I play games too. By, by Mr. X. Mr. X. Hate Mr. X. it. Hate that. Just makes me unsettled that I don't want to do it in games. <laughs> But that's also just personal preference. Yeah, well. A um, couple more bits of news here. <laughs> Steam will soon let you play local multiplayer games over the internet. Yeet. Which is interesting, kind of cool. It doesn't apply to many <laughs> games, but it'll apply to some games. Do we know what games? Overcooked. I'd... I don't know. I was it's just gonna, it's called, I was just gonna it's say. called remote play together. Yeah, we were talking about wanting to play Overcooked, play but it is only local multiplayer. That would probably, I would imagine that would. That's a, a fairly popular the game. Second, the I'd second imagine that one, would be one is online multiplayer. Yeah, the only only the first one is local, but it's also like fifteen dollars more expensive. They're launching a beta in late October or later in October to uh, for this, which is it's it's cool. I mean, me and Shane tried a with the Dolphin emulator. They have a you can do like things you can play <laughs> co-op essentially with the dolphin emulator online in different areas there is decent latency so it doesn't work great but uh it, i mean that might have just been shane's internet or my internet or i mean it was okay. it was probably mine i wasn't hardwired it was okay like i'd like to try it again maybe and see since their update what it was like we played kirby's air ride and it was only kind of sucky so i would do it again no problem I, I would want this more with like my old games than I want this with current games, honestly. Because most current Worms games you can 3D. play online. Yes. Yeah. Sure, 3D. Worms 3D. I think Worms, Worms 3D, 3D is... Would be great. Or, is, not, is that not already online multiplayer on Steam? I, is that not on yeah, Steam? Yeah, I'm sure it is. I'm Steam. sure it is. I would love Worms Forts. Worms Forts, uh, criminally underrated. Uh, yes. Shane, look up what that got rated on stuff. I want to see how if people actually like the games. I really like Worms Forts. It was good. All right, uh... Two last things. Call of Duty Mobile is the biggest mobile game launch ever. Ever? Oh my god. Ever. 
Guess how many how many billions of downloads it got? Eleven. Eleven. Eleven? Corey? Uh twelve. Twelve, Shane? You bitch. <laughs> um he prices right at you. <laughs> I'm gonna go big ball here. I'm gonna go sixty. Okay. Sixty Wrong. million. One hundred million what? downloads. I was the closest. One hundred million downloads. It smashed Fortnite when it came out. Holy crap! Fortnite only got uh, twenty-two and a half million. No. Call of Duty Mobile, one hundred million. Granted, Fortnite only launched when it launched on iOS, and it didn't launch on Android. And Call of Duty Mobile um, was co-developed by Tencent, which is uh, China. Yeah. So if you get that Chinese market, that's big. But I don't. I mean, I. I actually don't know if it launched in China, which I imagine if it was downloaded by Tencent, it was. But I mean, even PUBG, which is huge in China, got twenty-eight million. So this is huge. That's, Did it cost money too, or was it free? free? Shane, you were talking about it. Do you know? It's I do not know. I refuse to find out because that sounds awful. Has it. Why? Because one of her friends want to play it. It's not very good. It's look, look. It got into the most like casual of casual gamer phone right there. Yeah. Yes. Hundred million. That's pretty big. That's going to be huge money. All right. Worms Sports Under Siege on Metacritic has a 67. IGN, 6.9. Not great. Oh, well. But yeah, we're... Uh... The, I, I see a downside coming from from that being so successful. I would actually... Let me... Let me before you finish that, I'm going to roll back. Uh, it is without a China launch. No China launch. Whoa. 100 million. Oh, Oh, if it was China, if it, I imagine people like this game in China because we're not killing Chinese. Four hundred million, three hundred million, huge. Yeah. Who knows? All right, Davis, what are you going to say? So I see a downside coming to this. Okay. Do you remember at last E3 or whatever it was when they announced the next Diablo game? And everybody be, hated it. And everybody freaked out that it's going to be mm -hmm. on mobile exclusive. It's mobile exclusive. I see lots and lots of companies moving their stuff to mobile or or making like highly ex like awaited games like mobile exclusives like that just because they'll make way more money that's been the thought process for a long time but mobile gaming sucks yes yes, yes but i mean the people who are making the games that we love can make money still and they're people like us who like to play those games so like they're passionate gamers so games that we like to play will always exist they might be more niche they might be more like like less like the Call of Duties and more like the, I don't know, passion projects of like, know, like an Uncharted or something. Which I don't necessarily know that's a passion project, but it's more like an art. It's like a game. It's a like an artsy game than a like money making machine like the Call of Duties have been. Which I'm fine with. Honestly. I don't. I don't need Call of Duties every single year. If if you want to just push those on mobile for the casual gamers to make like a cash cow, that's fine. And just make my classy games. Classy. Yeah, more hard. I, I don't want to say like hardcore gamer game, but like it it is more hardcore, even though it's got a broad appeal. I I agree, but we are not greedy businessmen. Who They've don't been saying care that about video games, that's they been just want to make money. That's been a thought process forever. Yeah, EA does not care about video games. They care about making money. And they no, make a but, shitload of. It. But granted, like my life wouldn't end if all EA games ceased to exist. Right. No, it's fine. But beloved franchises are going to move to mobile, or at least, yeah. but like at least. none that I honestly give a shit about. Like, in, uh, granted, like the games that I love are games like Nintendo, which Nintendo loves their games, so mm -hmm. they're going to put stuff on mobile, but they're still going to make their games because Nintendo does what they want. And it's like, and it, I'm not worried about Nintendo going anywhere. And like most of the other games are that I like find an interest in are more niche studios. So I'm not. I'm not super worried about it happening. It's gonna happen clearly because this is huge. And as mobile phones get more powerful, it's they're more capable of stuff. Yeah. But yeah, everybody has this, but not everybody has a gaming PC or an Xbox. No, but that's that's where the money is. So. They're also once you know once streaming becomes a bigger thing and you can sell a cheaper box, it could be at everyone's home. Once you once you, a Chromecast gets you. Like it does with Google Stadia, it will get you the ability to play all the games. The barrier for entry becomes immediate. Or just a smart TV. It's like, well, instead of having to go out and buy this box, you just need this controller, which every household's got controllers, basically. You just plug it in, and then you can play all these games. And you just pay your subscription service, which is where these people love to make their money now. 
and you're good. So, but good for good for Call of Duty Mobile. I <laughs> that's a, that's a lot of downloads, which I would imagine a lot of money is. It's a lot of green. And then last bit of news here is something that I am very interested in, and I have an affinity, or not necessarily an affinity for. That's the wrong word, but I have a bit of a love for, even though I don't partake in it. Is some speedrunning news. Uh, and this is the only reason I grabbed this because it's it's cool. I love speedrunning. Speedrunning is really cool. I watch GDQs, Games Done Quick, every single time they do it when they do their hot fixes or their summer and their, or the winter one. Um, but there is a new speedrunning record for Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, and I only mention this because I love San Andreas also. So the previous record, what what category? Just any percent. Okay. Uh, it's just the basically. Just, Finishing Grand Theft Auto as soon as you can, using your whatever using exploits that you can. So they essentially shaved about three hours off the previous record. <laughs> wow, my god! With one single skip. So it went from <laughs> let me find the old time. So the old time, without without this this new record, it's t- it takes about three hours, fifty two minutes, and seven seconds was the record to beat it. With this new trick, uh, twenty five minutes and fifty two seconds. Wow. What the fuck? This game is old dicks, and they still can find these exploits. Like, I watched the exploit. Basically, it involves... You have to get, like, a police motorcycle, and you have to, like... Essentially, like, you're getting out of a car, and, like, you're... It's prompting a mission where you have to, like, pause buffer and get on this motorcycle and, like, start a motorcycle mission in, like, a garage. It's, like, a whole big thing. I'll send you guys the link, too, because it's pretty interesting. But somehow in the process of doing all this, it tricks the game into thinking you're on the last mission of the game, and it boots up the last mission of the game, and then you just got to finish the game. So, <laughs> Do you think the speedrunner that figured that out just, like, creamed himself as soon as he discovered this? Just, like, I, that's, like, got to so. be the ultimate, the like, ultimate high. Do you think, you, like, uh, how do people, I just it blows my mind how people figure this shit out. It they blows just spend, my fucking mind. Yeah. I, I think it, it was, I, I don't remember if I read it was based off of an exploit used in a different Grand Theft Auto game, and they just kind of applied it into this, I think, but I'm not for sure. Um, I don't understand the minutia of speedrunning tactics, because it just... It, it is so cool watching someone destroy a game. Love it. <laughs> it blows my mind. I, it doesn't make any sense to me. It's like a magician. It's just like, oh, here's the apple. Oh, just kidding. Apple's behind your ear. I'm like, <laughs> I'm a stupid pig when it comes to that. I'm like, oh, oink, oink, give me more. I'm gonna eat it all up, because it's great. But yeah, that was my little my speedrunning corner of, of news because I think that's cool. Speedrunning. Uh and that's all I have for news, I believe. Yay. Yeah. Moving on. Alright. Um So this week, our two games, like we said earlier, are Ghost Recon Breakpoint and uh Untitled Goose Game. Two games so, that are very similar. Very similar in many ways. <laughs> Great ways to take out your aggression in both of them. So we will. Uh, me and Corey played Ghost Recon Breakpoint, as we said last week, and then Shane and Davis played uh, Untitled Goose Game. So me and Corey are going to start off giving our uh, our spiel on um, Ghost Recon, and then we'll we'll give the floor to Shane and Davis. So me and Corey got this game. We got the UPlay Plus, which launched at the beginning of September, I believe. So we subscribed to UPlay Plus for like fifteen bucks a month. We get a bunch of UPlay games. There's a handful of pretty decent games in that in that grouping. Um, but uh, this is basically the only thing that I've used it to play. I don't know if you played anything else in that yet. Have you, Core? No, not yet. Doesn't matter. Like so, I, yeah. Oh yeah, Core had some issues with it too, which is interesting. But um, so it is the newest Ghost Recon game. Uh, it's similar to Wildlands. I think for I played very little Wildlands. Core, you played a fair amount of Wildlands. I think that will be our barrier of comparison for this because Wildlands was, as you've said, a pretty good game, right, Core? Oh, I, I loved it. Yeah, I've heard very good things about Wildlands, and I've seen a lot of people com- essentially compare this game to Wildlands. Um, so you are a military. You're in the military, uh, and this is like a tech guru island. I'm not fully sure where it is. It sounds like it's like New Zealand or Australia um, area, but I'm not. It's an island, basically, uh, of and of these people that the this tech guru is based on this tech company is based on so the game is based around like drones and like everything like that so it's like 
Jeff Bezos's wet dream. Um, <laughs> so there's essentially these like this uh, private military takes over this tech company island. Uh, this well, this tech company and all their drones they have, and they basically make it so no one can leave the island because they like have these like weird like locust drones that eat the shit out of these like boats or planes when they try to leave and you can't leave so as as the story unfolds there's you there's a backstory behind you and all that but honestly the dialogue kind of sucks like first and foremost not great it's i find myself getting bored of what they're saying and just want to skip through everything uh would you agree with that Corey? absolutely yeah it 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 just i mean the dubbing is not good at all which is weird because I don't think they're like dubbing. I think it was like made for these texts, right, and exactly. it just seems like it, it was does dubbed. not fit with like the, what their like the shape their mouths make. Do not make the sounds that are coming out of their mouths. No, it's not very not not the best. But not um, very good. yeah, and it just like it, like you said, what what they're saying, like I don't care. I just want to play. There's also cutscenes like every five seconds. Oh, it's so full of cutscenes. Like for uh, at the beginning, there was a lot of like. And the load times aren't quick. Like, it's not super bad. Like, it's definitely not the worst, but not fast enough to warrant having a billion cutscenes right at the beginning of this game. It's just like, it, yeah. it's just like I want to play this game. I want to learn how to play this game. Um, visually, not great. Like, I don't... I played uh, Division 2, and I think Division 2 looked way better than this game did. And I also played them both on PC. Um, I mean, it looked fine, but, like, not really, not really very good. Probably not. It shouldn't be... Their newest game shouldn't look better than... Or look worse than both of their their two prior games. Did it look better than Wildlands? Do you, or was it about? It's been comparable? a it's been a while since I've played Wildlands. I can't say accurately. Either way, but yeah. Um, and the UI is a mess. Uh, there is so much going on. So it's like, uh, the menus there are very cumbersome. So, like, the mission menu is interesting, but it is not straightforward or nice to navigate at all. It's like a skill tree of missions. So, it's like you have the beginning, and it's right in the middle. And then it just spiderwebs out with all these different mission options. And it's like, you can go all these bajillions of different directions, and then there's, like, submissions within these missions. And it's just, like, a mess of, like, exclamation points saying, like, oh, you've unlocked these missions, you've unlocked these missions, you can go this way, you can go that way. And it's not clear which way is like you should be going and it's definitely not the best way to do missions probably the one of the wor worst ways that i've seen to do missions yeah. in any game it, it also it, if if one person selects a mission it doesn't automatically select it for everyone it, i do it, however like that feature it, it, it offers up to a vote it's like it, cory picked this mission to do would you like to do it and then you can like hit f1 to say yes or you can hit f2 to say no which is interesting but like sometimes it'll give you that option. Sometimes it'll just, you'll, you'll look up in the corner and you'll see, oh, they're in this mission and you're just exploring. I would chalk that up to the game not being very polished, though. Yeah. I think, it sh I think it's supposed to work it, every it, single it, time. It also, sometimes, like, when you go to enter a cutscene, someone won't, and you'll just be walking around while the other person's in a cutscene. <laughs> it sometimes gives you the option to join, but, yeah, it's... Corey got left, like, Shane played it with us, too, but he's yeah. not going to talk about it too much. But, like, me and Shane were in a helicopter, and Corey was a little bit left behind, and, like, we went to a place, and a cutscene triggered for me and Shane. And, like, we were talking about the cutscene, and Corey was like, I'm not in the cutscene. I'm like, oh. And, like, sometimes it'll prompt you, would you like to join this cutscene? But I feel like there's a distance barrier. Like, if you're not close enough, it won't give you the prompt. But, like, if you, you have to be, like, within a certain distance. I don't know, I don't know that that's true. It might have just, like, not prompted him to be it, in the cutscene, period. And it should have, but I don't know. However, it, just because you aren't in the cutscene, like it, that doesn't mean you won't complete the mission. It will still give you credit for it. So Correct. You just won't God know what's going that. on. Yeah. So like all so of a like, sudden there was like this this little girl and and an old man. I had no idea <laughs> who the fuck they were. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, and the map is big, but not huge. I, 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 it's I'm smaller than. I'm pretty sure it's smaller than Wildlands. Yeah. So that, I mean, that map is the biggest one I've ever played. It's it's a pretty big map still. Like we, I've periodically, I feel like they don't make a good as far as we've played. We haven't played a huge amount, but we played for a handful of hours. Uh, it doesn't make a great use of the space though, because I feel like a lot of the time we'll do a mission and then it's like you have to fly eight kilometers, which is pretty far, to do the next thing. And it's like you'll get there and it's like now you have to fly seven kilometers a different direction. It's like 
what's what are we doing with all this like empty space like there is a just giant empty marsh of nothingness it's like you could put something in there put missions or something in there have me like take steps along the way don't just make me fly it's like if you don't have a helicopter which they're not very fast either i don't know that there are planes or not but i guess there are planes and wildlands but we didn't find any planes it's kind of difficult to traverse things sometimes but there, there are planes and wildlands right yeah i don't know i don't know if there are in this game we haven't found any we've seen what i think are uavs which uh will like alert the area to where you are if you get caught by them so like there's con- like, every once in a while there's be a uav flying over and you gotta like hide from it and they're like a lot of this game is hiding from drones or like it's a very like drones was like the cool feature like a lot of games will, like have a cool feature and they'll base it around they'll base their stuff around that feature this game was very clearly it's like our feature is drones and we're gonna do cool shit with drones which they did do some cool stuff with drones which is fun like i like drones that was like I would say that Ghost that Recon's did. core is drones. Like, Not always. A, that, that, <laughs> but the, I re, the three that I've played is this one, uh, a bit of Wildlands, and then what was it? Futures, whatever the future one future we played Soldier. on. Yeah, that. All three had drones, and all three, the drones were heavily used. It's the future, bro. They were, they were predicting the future before, and now we're in the future, and it's drones. Uh, I think a game takes place in, like, I don't know, it's like 2025 or something. Because yeah, it'll do flashbacks think. to like 2020 or 2022 or something. Yeah. Um, well, one of the things that I think they really did improve upon from Wildlands is the drone battery time. Uh, in Wildlands, like when you first get your drone, you like take it out and it lasts for like 15 seconds and then it's gone. That's uh, really long in this game, right? Huh? That's oh, really yeah, it long lasts a really long time in this. But it it also can cover more distance, and it's I really like it. It is cool. Um, there's like th- four, three. How many classes options were there? Was it three or four? Four. I think it's four. Uh, yeah, there are four f- players. I think each person. Yeah, can be a different one. There are four class options, and they basically don't matter at all. They matter for your action skill, which is not like incredibly like game changing of a skill but you have you have the ability to use the same skill tree as everyone else once you start the game it just you it's literally your your class just picks your action skill and i think you could change it anytime and i think it also gives you like a a slight like boost in some kind of area maybe it's like you get an action skill and you get i I have like steadier aim because i chose the sharpshooter maybe but like you could still like if we could theoretically you and i could have the same skill tree filled out and like have the same ability to use all the same stuff, even though we're completely different classes. So yeah. it's like, I, I mean that's fine and all, but I mean I don't. I wish that there was more of a reason, like more of specialty stuff. Because uh, like I picked the, I think the, the class is called like Panther, which is like stealth. So I get like this. It's like a spray canister that makes UAVs and drones not be able to see me as well. That's basically it. And then I can like I drop a smoke grenade, and I can run off and hide. But that's like basically it. And then I can just do whatever with the skill tree. Uh, and then Corey was a sniper. Yeah, and I, I honestly, like, I tried using my action skill once, and I didn't notice anything happen. So I'm not entirely sure what it does. Who knows? But uh, all in all, uh, it's not a not a bad game. It's not a great game. It's not a very polished game. Uh, it's fun. Is it worth uh, $60? Oh. Is it worth when $60? Not. Probably yeah. not. No. This is this would be a game that I would say, wait until it goes on sale for, like, maybe 40 and then you could definitely pick it up for 40 uh, Yeah. But, because like... It, it, it is a lot of fun. Uh, but there are some glitches when not uh, when me and Shane went to go open up a chest and he started flipping in in the air, just like floating in the air, just started doing flips. Yeah, it's not a very polished game, but it is a good time to play with friends. I would ne- It is not a good game to play by yourself. Like that is the same gripe that I had with uh, Fallout seventy six. Is that there are better versions of this game if you want to play a game by yourself. But if you want to play with buddies, which there are probably actually there are better versions you can play with buddies too, like Corey said, Wildlands. But um, like if I had to give this this game a ranking, like a like a conservative, realistic ranking, I would probably put it at like a sixty-seven, uh, sixty-seven to seventy. But I'm I would say like sixty-seven. Like it's it is broken in a lot of ways and it's lacking in a lot of ways. But like there is still fun to be had. But it's definitely not not for the sixty dollars price point. And I spent sixty dollars on a game that was remastered for the Game Boy, less than a month ago. So that's <laughs> that's saying something. I didn't even spend sixty dollars on this game. Core, what are your final thoughts on it? I don't know that's 
I'd, I'd put it in that same kind of range, like 67, 70. Like it's, it just, it, it's, it definitely, like you said, unpolished. Uh, if they fix it up a little bit and, you know, take out some of those bugs, then it, it like my ranking would go a little higher. But uh, yeah, it, it's, overall, it is a fun game. But yeah, you know. All right, let's hear about Goose Game. All right, so me and Davis played Goose Game. Yep. Davis, what did you play it on? Played on Switch. Okay, same. So not much difference, but also it's only what it's not on Xbox or anything, right? No, no I think it's so. PC. Switch I think PC. it's. I think it's. They're talking about bringing it to these to the other systems up. It was and popular enough that they, I'm sure they will. Instead of sixty dollars, it was twenty or fifteen, depending on if you got it on sale or not. I got uh, fifteen. Yeah, same. It was on sale on the Switch for some reason, and it just came out. So we, that was fun. That was great. Uh, it's if you if you've never heard anything about it, it's a game where you play as a goose and run around in a little English town, checking off things on a checklist to uh, to do like steal a rake and put it in the lake. Rake right? in the lake. Uh, it that's the best way to sum up the game. Uh, it's a they describe it as a stealth puzzle game. That's yep. I guess stealth, very minimal stealth, more just the puzzle game. Um, but yeah. I kind of enjoyed it. Uh, I think it was, I, I think the styling of the game is damn near perfect. It was super pretty to look at. The environments were cool and the music was cool. And it was very simplistic, which played really well for the, the price and kind of the, the objective of the game. Um, I thought it was very short, but I don't know what else they could do to pad it out because I was kind of getting a little bit bored by the third area. So it was just get this thing and put it here and steal this thing from this guy. And they just switch it up each each zone a little bit. Um, but then at the end, I guess we're going to uh, spoil it, I suppose. Spoilers. Uh, spoilers. Um, so you go through four areas and at the end you get into the a model town of, or model model of the whole town. Um, and at the end of the town in the model, there's just like a giant castle or whatever. And you break it down and you steal the bell that's at the top of the bell tower. And from there you have to take it all the way back. And all the NPCs have moved their locations and they're trying to get the bell from you. And every time you run, the bell rings and alerts them so they're trying to get the bell from you and that's where the stealth part comes in kind of that's like the only really stealthy part because you have to kind of puzzle solve to get around them and be sneaky uh, and at the very so you get you get all the way back to the start and you and you deposit your bell and you like throw it down a little little ledge and there's just a pile of bells so like you you're kind of confused why everybody doesn't like the goose off right off the bat and then you find out at the end that he's been stealing bells from this model town for who, who knows how long yeah the goose is a huge asshole <laughs> yeah apparently Surprise. all geese are yes yeah, true remember the goose from rugrats davis and i and i guess cory to a lesser extent we lived in a town <laughs> where geese were awful they had to put signs around it's like during their mating season it's like don't go near these geese oh they're yeah. gonna fuck you up because yeah. they absolutely will <laughs> so um it, i beat it in just a little over three hours i did it all in one session um it's very easy to to play through it really quickly because again there's only four areas and you can you can get through the areas pretty quickly especially kind of once you know what you're doing um and i wish i wish there was more variety but again i don't know what they would do differently uh because of what the game was and the price point and how simplistic it was i don't yeah, yeah no. i don't know how they could pad it out besides just put more zones in but they would be all at the same it would be repetitive. So, um, for what the game was, I think it did a really good job at being what it was. I yeah. wish there was more. Somehow, I don't know. I'm not a game designer, but I wish there was more because it was a cool concept. Why do you think it became a meme? Because a game. Because it was a huge meme. A game, yeah. Because a game that is called Untitled Goose Game looked really good and played pretty well and. It sold um, 100,000 copies in the first two weeks, and you're a goose, and you get to do like the whole, like, put your wings out and honk at them. So 
you could just honk the entire time. You could just honk at people. So people who played the game on YouTube and stuff would just honk and be funny. And then that, that's just what the... Was it a YouTube game? Was that what made it? Or was it yeah, just like a game sure. that people, a bunch of people played? Everybody on YouTube played it. Okay. Yes. Uh, I, I think what helped it become a meme, I, by the way, love the game, uh, but is how accessible it is. Like anyone can, who, you can pick up a game, no matter if they play video games or not, they can pick up the game and immediately just have fun. So I kind of agree with you on Switch. I, I saw, I watched a little bit of like, I was curious to how it would work on PC. And like they show you the control buttons, and like there's a lot of controls that don't make sense. You don't move with WASD. You move with like pointing the mouse. Oh, jeez. So like you hold a button to mo- like move. I think it's like left click or so- right click or something, and then you just wherever you're aiming the mouse, the goose is gonna kind of veer that way. So it's the controls on the PC were bad. Um, oh. But that's how most people play it since it was easy to record. So, um, for YouTube. But uh, so the. Switch controls were fine, but the uh, the the PC port was um, kind of lacking in the controls. But I I, I had a a, g- a good time, even though it was a short time. Yeah, I I mostly played the game through a span of maybe three four days. Uh, I would play it a bit before bed, like do a zone before bed. Uh, well in bed, so that's the perks of the Switch. Gotcha, but <laughs> uh. <clears throat> I do. I I agree with Davis in the sense that it was. It felt repetitive towards the end, and it was. I wish there was more than just do what's on the list. Some of the puzzles though were great. Some of them were like a lot harder to try and figure out on exactly how am I supposed to do this. Like yeah, there were there were a lot of vague things like um, getting replacing the guys, getting a guy to wear a hat, different hat. Yeah, or like have the um, have the old man fall on his bum. I don't know how to do that, so I have to. We have to watch the old man for a little bit and watch his patterns, and then figure out how to make him fall. That's interesting. Yeah. So, but I, I totally kind of zoned out in, in the last zone because it was. I didn't know how much was longer, and it was again. It was just the, the same thing. You go to a new area and you do tasks, and then they they mixed it up for the last bit to take your the bell all the way back, and that kind of brought me back in because it was new, and. uh a, a different kind of it, it was a different mechanic I suppose that's where this i think that's where the stealth comes in when they say a stealth puzzle game um because most of it was just waiting or going yeah. a different a different route to get around a guy not really stealth stuff yeah uh, did you see that after you beat the game there was more stuff added to the list yeah okay yep i didn't do it um, yeah, yeah no they add they add harder challenges and much more unique things like taking an item from a different area and bringing it to this area and doing something with it, it's which is cool, but it just feel that makes it sound more tedious than what the base game <laughs> yeah, was. Shane, Shane was. Shane was telling me about a um, some guy who made a video or whatever of taking every item and putting bringing it back to the beginning, and I think that's just masochistic and stupid. Yes. I, I don't remember how long you said it took him, but it was that's just, there's a lot of items that you can pick up. And that's just... Every item in that model town is also able to be picked up. Yeah, that's ridiculous. So it it literally it, it was to the point where they could no longer they, there's a cliff you drop the bell off at the, of at the end of the game that at the end of that cliff a half of, oh, not even all the items maybe like a third of all the items in the game were enough to fill that cl- hole up and you couldn't put anything else over there. It was re- it's ridiculous, which is cool for a game about puzzle solving because it gives you a lot of options to try and figure out what you're supposed to do. But it's still, it just, it just, the whole game sound, it got real, just repetitive at the end. Yeah. For but for $15, it was, it's it's a perfect game. I think it's worth $10. I don't think it's That's probably fair. Based, based off the timing, or how long it's. For what, it, the game as is, I would probably give, like, a 90. Because it's, it has a very specific goal, and it does it to a T. But again, I, I wish there was more, and I wish it was a little bit more diverse. Yeah, so I, I can I, agree with that completely. If I was rating it based off of what I would hope it to be, I would have, or what I was hoping it would be, I would probably say like seventy-five, because um, there is that lacking. But for what it was, I would say it was. It it, it seems like it would be like a, a good kind of like mobile game type of thing, something that's cheap. And it is, yeah, a little bit. And, a little and, bit. and switch it is a mobile game too. Yeah, 
Right. Honestly. I would have never gotten it on the PC. It's an Epic score, Epic Store exclusive, right? Yes. yes. I think I would imagine I, most people probably yeah. can switch then. I think ten dollars would be a, a better price for it. So um, I think it was fifteen dollars because it was shown off in two thousand seven seventeen. Oh, was it was a really? long time ago? Yeah. That's so, when I was first like tra- had a trailer. Or for those of you at home wondering if you should pick up Ghost Recon or Go- or Goose Game, <laughs> the numbers say Goose Game. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And absolutely Goose wait for for Ghost Recon. Yeah, I think I have a better time if you enjoy both types of games equally. I think I have a better time with Goose Game, even though it's short. It's a good Saturday morning snuggling up on your couch in your PJs. Well, I can honk to that. And with that, honk. we're going to get into our <laughs> our, uh, our ranking slash list slash draft for this week. Uh, and it's going to be related to Goose Game. Top, It's our top slash favorite slash best video game animals. Uh, I was pretty broad at this. You could pick any kind of animal, anthropomorphic or otherwise. Uh, and uh, we're going to start off She's going to order Shane, Don, Corey Davis, and let's just kick right into it. Shane, who is your number one draft pick video game animal? Uh, number one draft pick video game animal is honestly an animal from a game I never actually played. Uh, but How very Shane of you. But <laughs> the moment I saw the first trailer, I was in love with the, with this dog. It would be Boomer from Far Cry 5. Which I Boomer, don't even know what you're talking about. That, yeah. that, that, would, that would be the dog in Far Cry 5. My favorite dog. <laughs> my favorite uh, animals from a game I've never it's a, played. It's, it's a know. blue healer Australian dog, and I had a dog that looked exactly like it. Okay, so that's Boomer. Why. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Boomer. Also, he's just a good boy. Don's. Oh, you don't know. Yeah, no, I do know. I've I've seen gameplay. All right. Don's number one draft pick for video game animal. I'm gonna go with uh-huh. banjo. Yeah, that's <laughs> my number one as well. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> He's That's a bear. Uh, I'm not taking bird, so Kazooie, Kazooie can 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 live. But uh, bottles, he's, bottles for life. He's yes, stupid ass. He's dead. In case you're <laughs> curious, dead. spoiler. Uh, <laughs> spoiler from 20 years ago. <laughs> so it came out like 98 or whatever. I had uh, no idea. <laughs> well, good for you. But yeah, the bear is awesome. Uh, Banjo is a great game. We'll pro- maybe the best platformer ever, debatably. Uh, yeah. But it's a lot of fun, and Banjo's cool, and I love his, uh-huh. and uh, <laughs> the the whole world. So that's Banjo's number one. Corey, my first pick is Shadow. Shadow the Hedgehog. <laughs> I've Shadow. cursing Ever version since... or non cursing version. Uh, not non cursing. Uh, I was plan. not a, not mistake. a fan of Damn. that game. <laughs> Shadow. I mean, the thing about that game, it was a fun game. It was just no, it's not. It was weird. <laughs> Shadow Aliens and cursing. What more do you need? It's so <laughs> yeah, edgy. Right? All right. Davis. No, ever since Sonic Adventure oh, Two, when it first came out, it was great. All right, my number one pick is Danky Kang. Danky Kang. Danky Kang. I almost typed Danky Donkey. Danky Kang. <laughs> Danky Kang. <laughs> uh. He's the leader of the bunch, and you know him well. Um, <laughs> he's indeed back to kick some tail. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's a big burly man, and or big burly Danky Kang, and uh, he wears a tie, and he's one of my mains. And he's fun. Cool. You like the big boys in Smash? I do like the big boys. Davis is chunky. In all aspects of life. True. <laughs> That's why Corey's his favorite. All right, Shane, we're back up at the top. What's your number two pick? Is it also from a game you never played? It's also no, this one's from the game I just played. It's the goose. Are you for real? I I, I am for real. Your top totally two. Be- stop. Your top two favorite animals <laughs> ever in games are a a game you never played and b a game you played starting two weeks ago. You're an idiot. <laughs> My first one for me uh, because it looks identical to a, a dog I had, uh, and the goose because I feel like it is the embodiment of a goose. I feel like it's a goose. no <laughs> shit. No, like it. It made me, it made me really enjoy the game. Like if it was any other animal, I don't think it would have been as fun to do a puzzle game like that. You blow my goddamn mind, Shane. I can't wait. Shane, I'm guessing Shane's third pick is going to be the goat from Goat Simulator. God, I was no. just going to say that. I hope so. <laughs> no. All right. That was my be second my pick. Joke. No, that's my fourth pick. That's my second pick <laughs> is better than Shane's pick. It's Spyro. Yeah, it's He's good. an adorable dragon. Yes. Is a uh, from one of my. F- Maybe my second favorite platforming franchise. I really love Spyro platforming games. I don't know. I they're a lot of fun. He's awesome looking. I really like dragons. Purple's a good color. Uh, his games are fun. The soundtracks are great. That's probably the best thing that Sting's ever done. 
Sting. He's in the police, right? Sting's in the police. Yeah. 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 Sting. It's the best thing that Sting's ever done. Uh, so except that's a really, win. Except have really long sex. Tantric. Yeah. For the record, you should, you should look that up. If you haven't. It's yeah, funny. he 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 bones for a long period of time for some reason and doesn't give the woman any pleasure. It's like soaking. All right, uh, Corey. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna have to go with dog meat from Fallout. Good pick. Dog? Which one? Which Fallout? Take a wild fucking guess. Three. Yes. Is that the introduction of dog meat, or is dog meat in the prior Fallout? I don't know, and I don't know that. I don't know know. either. I thought you were. He probably was another Fallout game. I'm glad you said three and not four, because dog meat in Fallout Four is the worst NP or worst companion existence. He looks good though. He He looks looks great, but he won't get out of your way. It's true. And it's very just like Corey's companion in fucking Borderlands. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> true. Davis, what's your second pick? Uh, Koopa Troopa. Uh, super iconic and super, the green one. Uh, I've always been more of a uh, pear trooper, red guy myself. I but, agree. Uh, so, do you, so pear. So, all right. I'm gonna sure, parenthesize pear trooper. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I, I I've always liked the red one more. I don't know. And not not be, not from like, not because the red shells don't fall off ledges. In like the original games or anything, I just I just like the the wings and um, color better, I suppose. I agree. That's for choice. Yes. Right, Chain. It is. I I just need to point out. I had a hard time coming up with thinking of any animals. I completely missed the idea of you know enemies and games and or actual... any Sonic character. Yeah, I did. See, I wasn't thinking of any of that. Uh, so my list kind of shit like always. Uh, Surprise! <laughs> my 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 third pick is dogs in Minecraft. Geppetto. All right, Geppetto. <laughs> Rip Geppetto. Shin- He's alive in our hearts. True. Uh, that is a fine pick. Honestly, that's a fine pick. The yeah, rest, the rest of yours are so bad that that's a fine. That's actually, you know, what, <laughs> because the other ones are so bad, that's a phenomenal pick, Shane. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Yay! But yes, dogs in Minecraft. All right, Don's third pick. This is where I'm surprised nothing else on my list has been picked, so it's tough on me picking a third one. Uh, but I'm going to go with, yet again, another great platformer. I'm going to go with Conquer, the squirrel. Uh, he's edgy and likes to cuss like me. And he's <laughs> and adorable. Shadow. And Shadow, that's true. <laughs> I think he likes to cuss a little more than Shadow because... Oh, yeah, uh, he's edgy, thing. likes to cuss, and a belligerent asshole, just like Don. Just yeah. like me. <laughs> and he Not fights wrong. Pooh almost as often as I do. I am the great mighty Pooh, and I'm going to take a shit on Shane. <laughs> do you also oh. jump on uh, flower titties? Regularly. Nice. That's only my spare time, though. All right, Corey, number three pick. Uh, <clears throat> Gex. Oh, Good my pick. God. Gex. <laughs> I Bad love pick. Gex 64. And Gex three, amazing, I, I have so no much fun. Talked about. He's a, a spy. He's basically Gecko? a James Bond spoof. Yeah, a Gecko. Okay, it's awesome. That's a franchise that I'm surprised hasn't been revisited. Give it time, right. Davis. Uh, la, 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 uh, Wolf Link from Twilight Princess. That was on my mind, but it didn't make my list. Mm. Yeah, it made my list. Pick. I forgot that that was a thing. Yes. Um, while being forced to play Wolf Link in Twilight Princess is my least favorite part of that game. For sure. For sure. Uh, the concept was still cool, and I liked when you could transform back and forth. So that would run faster, but... And he, he looked cool, and he, uh, was a good boy. And Midna ro- rode you. Yes. Giggity. So if that's your thing, play that game. All right, back to the top. Okay. <laughs> um, my next pick is uh, the Palcos from Monster Hunter World, which are your little cat companions that fight with you and can pa- knock things out for with you. Palco? Palco. P-A- P-A-L-C-O. Like a calico cat, but with a P instead of a C. Yes. Uh-huh. Also, just for reference, mine in Monster Hunter World is named Mr. Ruffles. I named him myself. My- mine's named me. David Meowy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Enjoy. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, Don, what's your number four? I wonder if I can fill my list exclusively with platformers. So I'm just going to keep the list going. I'm going to do Crash Bandicoot. <laughs> what do we go? 
Uh, I love Crash. It 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 was the beginning of the. It wasn't the beginning. It was like, it was kind of the beginning of like the remaster craze because I think people realized it's like we can literally re- remaster all these games, and like there have been remasters before that, obviously. But I feel like that was like they did. We had that. We had Spyro. Then um, what's the company? Uh, who made who made the uh Saints Row games? Th no. Uh, Th- yes, Thq Th- Nordic. Thq yeah. Nordic. They announced a bunch of remasters, like the SpongeBob game, and a bunch of them. We're getting a whole bunch of remasters. It's the it's we're getting it all. We're getting all those like those mid like those mid tier games are being remastered. Bring them all back. Thank you, Crash. I love love playing as that that little Bandicoot uh, and playing through all those games. I really loved Crash too. That was probably my favorite of the Crash games. Um, Crash Bandicoot. It's my fourth pick. All right, uh, Corey, what's your fourth pick? Uh Chocobos. Final Chocobo. Fantasy. Chocobo. That was actually on my list. That was a backup. That that, well. that was a backup to a game you haven't played, <laughs> and a game that you just played. All right. The dog looked identical. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Davis, four pick. You know what's spooky? When you're walking yep. through the post-apocalyptic world and you hear something running up behind you, you turn around and there's a giant death claw behind Good you. Good pick. <laughs> uh, super cool enemy, super cool stu- uh, design. Scary as all hell, especially in the like um, in three when there's I think it's three where there's the there's the um, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the the subway underground thing and it's like full of them. Boogie. What are they based off of? They're like geckos that just it's uh, some sort got morphed, of right? gecko lizard thing. But yeah, a little little baby boy that got morphed into a giant monster that got real big. Yep. There we go. All right, uh, Shane, back up for your last pick. Uh, my last pick will be KK Slider from Animal Crossing, the best musical dog around. That is a solid pick. Shane's only good pick. <laughs> Dogs in Minecraft's a fine pick, but that is actually a good pick. Two, two out of you nailed this, Shane. Two out of five. Probably your best week yet. <laughs> Woo! I don't know. He had definitely some better weeks. This was not a great week for him. <laughs> I'd, right. ar- I'd argue that Palicos are a good pick, but you guys don't play much Monster Hunter, so. Or any for that matter. Never played the game once. Um, <laughs> Don, what's your fifth pick? Uh, I'm gonna break the trend and I'm gonna go Knuckles. Canucks. Canucks. You know who's uh, cool? Sonic. Knuckles. Knuckles. He is super cool. Uh, if Sega would have let him curse, he would have been a curser as well. I'm sure. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he likes rap music. Heck yeah, he does. Uh, and he punches things. I don't know how much cooler you can get. So, so Knuckles. Corey, what's your last pick? Uh, mine is the second half to one of your picks, Kazooie. Mm, the, the Briegel itself. I love Kazooie. <laughs> She's yes. awesome. I like Kazooie too. I've never you played the game. Tui? What? I said you mean Tui? You Bad. said Kazooie too. I had to. Kazooie too. couldn't resist. Bad. All right, but, uh, last pick. Last pick. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna hop on board the Sonic train, and um, I'm gonna go fishing. Big again. Yes. Oh, why didn't I choose Big? <laughs> big is my fucking favorite. God damn it! You fool. He fell to the last pick of the draft. He was Mister Ar- Irrelevant. Oh, Froggy. Froggy. <laughs> Where are you, Froggy? All right, <laughs> Big the Cat, classic, classic. Uh, and uh, there were three Sonic characters, uh, and Sonic was not one of them. And Big the Cat was, which is an <laughs> interesting list. Get your shit uh, together. Should, have, should have been my first pick. So Shane, you've got you had Boomer, which I don't actually remember even what game that was from anymore. Uh, Far Cry Five Goose from Goose Game, Dogs and Minecraft, uh, the Palco and KK Slider. I had Banjo, Spyro, Conquer, Crash, and Knuckles. Corey had Shadow, Dogmeat, Gex, Chocobo, and Kazooie. And then Davis had Donkey Kang, uh, Koopa Troopa, specifically the Paratroopa, uh, Wolf Link, Deathclaw, and Big the Cat. Honorable mentions. Um, my only something. honorable mention was Epona. That's a good one. Yeah. Good, good. That, was, uh, uh, that was going to be on my list. I actually thought you were going to take it. Uh, my honorable bl- mention is Mac from ReCore, which is a game I know you guys didn't play, so I'm not going to go into it. Is that the Robo Dog? 
Yes, Robo Dog. Cool. That was a launch title, wasn't it? Yes. Did you like it? I did. All right, that's all I need to know. All right, never uh, got the Carnegie. Carnegie. Did you have any? Did you have that's any? all I need to know. C- cream. Oh, cream. Cream the rabbit. <laughs> that's, that's, the let's rabbit clarify. Awesome. Let's, let's not just say. Shane wants have to you cream like rabbits. Cream. <laughs> <laughs> that's common knowledge, Don. Yeah, it's true. I'm kind of disgusted by that. I had a few honorable mentions. I had Butt Stallion from Butt Borderlands. Stallion. Oh, God. Yeah. I had the Kukos from Zelda. Mm-hmm. Uh, Monty Mall from Mario. Uh, Slippy Toad from Star yes. Fox. And Frogger. Frogger from Frogger? Yes. Obviously. Who's Frogger from Tetris? Yes. Tetris. <laughs> That's not, not a bad list. Uh, so, as we do every week, this week in gaming. Now, this one. Do you guys know what was released this week in gaming? This day, October 14th of. What year? 2014. Nope, no clue. Uh, no. Call of Duty of some kind. Actually, there are two games. I didn't actually. Technically, yes, Borderlands pre sequel, but that was not the game of the week. Uh, the game this week is Duck Dynasty, baby. Oh my god. <laughs> oh Duck my Dynasty god. was released in 2014 uh, on this day. Uh, <laughs> does that show even still exist? 2,000 copies. No? I, they had they had like a box set. I think it came with like a, a goose call that was on clearance at the GameStop at uh, NIU. And I tried to convince my roommate to buy it every single time we went there, and he never did it. So. Maybe wasn't, one day that that'll be that'll be bought in someone's house. Wasn't that me in 2014? Maybe it is you too. I try to convince a lot of people to buy. It, so. <laughs> I was definitely living with you in 2014. <laughs> I don't know that. I don't know if it was my roommate at the time, but I, I don't like it was clearance, so it wasn't when it came out anyway. It was probably later. It was probably in 2015 or 2016 that I actually tried to. I doubt it was immediately like I was on sale clearance, which wouldn't be surprised, but I doubt it. <laughs> but yeah. Duck Dynasty, and to a lesser extent, Borderlands pre sequel, but I didn't uh, look for hard enough to see that. Retail release came out uh, same day, so that's okay. uh, probably a more interesting fact. But I figured Duck Dynasty was a funnier fact. Yeah, that was a close. good episode, gentlemen. Mm-hmm. Covered a lot. Do we know our game for next week? We. I'm gonna say a game, and you can say yes or no to it. Okay. The new ukulele game. There's a new ukulele game? It's a side scroller. Ooh, it's only thirty bucks. Can I say no because I hate platformers? <laughs> you could say no. It's a but... side scroller for thirty bucks. Thoughts? Say nay. All right, so I guess we're saying nay to that one. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we're not going to play that. Say it might not be thirty dollars. We'll see what the price is. So we don't know a game yet because everyone's a pain in the ass. But we'll decide eventually. <laughs> yes, um, I am. Uh, so, like I said at the top of the show, like, subscribe, do all those things, share it. Tell everybody about how awesome we are, or how or awful how, we are. And either way, I am. Yeah. Either way, that'll garner some attention for us. Uh, yeah. See you guys same time, same place next week. Bye. Bye. Heart you this yeah. much.